Welcome one and all to this 20th episode of Series 3 for D&D with me Mike and me Zoe and today we're going to do this animation going up the, st- up the ladder yeah there's also something we should probably experiment with the whole idea of walking the direction like moving in the direction we're walking and just maybe holding some kind of magical swords to the side or something I don't know we'll see um, I, yeah I'm really not sure perhaps having some kind of because I, I like this, you know, dual stick system, but walking sideways like this looks a bit st- <laughs> Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, <clears throat> again, one option could possibly be to detach the head from from the rest, but I don't think that would really help too much. Um, we'll see. We'll see. So let's begin with the animation. All right, for that, we're going to open our player. Do, do, do. I'm guessing that was the model, was it? Yes. Okay. And we need the climb up a ladder animation. That was the jumping button. I know. This one's not too bad, though. It kind of looks like he's grasping at something, no? Yeah. Hmm. We'll just have get... to make his arms a bit wider. Yeah, Maybe. well, we'll see. Um, it would be good to bring in the ladder as an example here, but that's okay. We'll just, I mean, we're not going to do it too properly. It's fine. Um, okay. <clears throat> so let's duplicate this animation. Looks a bit weird, but I think it'll do. Um, boop. Rename this one uh, Ladder Climb. Hit enter. F- there it is. And we can delete this. Delete this, delete this, delete this, delete this, delete this. All right. So... The first keyframe is going to be hopping onto the ladder, which could be fairly similar to this. And he's going to be in the water while he hops on it. Yeah, that's so. true. So maybe just a bit closer, G again. Okay. Uh, sure, let's do this. A, A, I. All right. Now, <clears throat> here, rotate. Rotate, rotate, G, uh, Y, rotate, uh, G, rotate, I oh, know it's fine, it's fine, rotate this, G, okay, uh, and now it doesn't need to be too realistic, but let's do G again. And R and G. There, more or less. And again, just the same for the motion of walking. Oh, he's a bit bent, so let's rotate this. Rotate this. Okay. And now uh, for walking, so this one would be. Yes. So this one will be up and this one will be down. Rotate. G. Yeah, I think this will be all right. So A, A, I. Okay, now rotate. Rotate. Oops, I pressed E instead of R. G. 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 Rotate. G. Rotate. A, A, I. Okay. So uh, that's him. One, two. How many steps do we have? In I think our we have two. Prefabs, and map, you hop and up onto the ladder. Top. So it's one, <coughs> two, three, three, and then up. Okay, so this is gl- grab, then one, then two, two. Duplicate this one. Shift D. Okay. <clears throat> so we get this all right and then <clears throat> we're gonna do something in the middle like for example moving stuff up we'll worry about that later and then a last sort of hop right so here we're gonna do G R and G and R and G and R uh, and G and R, and R, and G. 
I mean R. Yeah. It's fine. R. Okay. There we go. So A. I. A. I. Yes. All right. So let's see. Where are we? We are at where we are. 14. Okay. So it's not too bad. Uh, I don't know the cadence, obviously, so we're going to have to worry about that later. What is cadence? Well, how the steps happen, right? You need to more or less coordinate it with the speed at which you're going up the steps in the game. Also, we're going to have to force rotation towards the ladder when we climb it. It's pretty important. <clears throat> okay, so uh, let's see. So we would need to have some kind of stop first. So G, move it here. Now shift D to duplicate this. And now G R and G R G uh, R G R R R R A A I. Okay, let's see now. Okay, see, so, so we're going up. All right, now let's move this one to the right. So G. Uh -huh. This one to the right. G. Uh, G, I guess, sure. And this one to the right. And this one to the right. There. Ah, they're evenly spaced. Yeah, but they're odd, so that won't work for us. So it's shift, shift, G, 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 okay, yeah, so now here, let's have his butt kick out a little bit, um, so G, R, and R, 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 uh, R, G, R, G, R, I, A, A, I. Oops, I pressed a different. So let's see how this goes. Okay, we done a bit too much, but that's okay. <laughs> I meant to do it here. That's fine. It doesn't matter. So here, uh, so he's now his left foot is going up, and his right foot would be pushing, right? So the right foot is fine, but the left foot needs to come out here. So uh, there, rotate. G. Uh, R. G. R. R. G. Uh, a A I There see it looks like he's going to go up and then climb in yeah now we're gonna do the same uh, This one is so actually duplicate this one for me shift D Put it here because this one's gonna be correct. Yeah, and see whoop He goes up and jumps right now here uh, We are moving the up the right foot Right, so we're gonna rotate this foot. Rotate. Yeah, G. G. R. 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 A A I. There. That doesn't look too bad. Okay, and then hop. He comes up, and then he's gonna go into the running motion, so we don't have to worry about it. Uh, now maybe this one, G, move it to here. Yeah, we'll see how this goes. <coughs> let's even extend it to 24 here. Yeah, so that's good. And now let's see if we can make these a bit more sparse. Uh, So G G G 
G and G and let's move this one to Uh, yeah, which is 32 because this is one based. Yeah. So AA, I mean, not AA, just control S. All right. So we're going to save this. As usual, we need to now add the animation to the model. <coughs> Player ladder climb. Okay, climb. It's not going to loop. Because that's speed double. This is normal. Ho. Ho. They're a bit too coordinated, the arm and the leg. The arm should go up first. But it's fine. I mean, for our game, it's going to be okay. Plus, now, we're not really going to see the arms much anyway. That's right. We see them flail a little bit, so it's not going to be a big deal. All right. So, again, we're going to create an any state, just like the jump. So we can duplicate this this one. Uh, in fact, you can hit Control D. Ladder. You can enter. I think ladder climb would be better. All right, then add the word climb. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna go with ladder climb. And that's it. And now make a transition. It's going to be from any, so the transition is going to happen immediately without question and interrupt anything, right? Which I very much like. Now, what do we need? We need a new trigger. We don't have a trigger, right? So new trigger, ladder climb. Mm -hmm. And now here we're going to say, actually, you're going to be ladder climb. Done. So. Yeah, so we'll see how this goes, right? It may have a good good enough cadence, it may not. We'll, we'll find out, right? I don't know. <coughs> um, we can also alter how fast the animation happens, right? So let's see. Now, back to the scene. Uh, well, actually, code, right? We need to go and trigger this animation. We also need to snap the rotation in that direction. But that's that may be something we, we worry about next when we're trying to fix the movement right I don't want to give you feedback right now my dude no I also don't want to open a file control them all okay here we go so player um, jump blah 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 start climb ladder that's the one so right here we're going to um, um, start an animation but it may be too soon so let's see transform position press in time fixed on letter mount duration no I think we should start the animation right now so let's begin need rotations see that's interesting um, right here let's do for now animator it's a variable you're making it difficult animator But apparently we didn't even call it that way. What did we call it? Player animator. Okay. P player animator. Okay, there it is. There it is. There it is. There it is. Uh, dot set trigger. Mm -hmm. Open round. What was the trigger called? Trigger was called climb, ladder climb. Okay, then you know how you know what to do. Yeah, semicolon. Now, one thing we, we kind of forgot to do in our animator is that, um, how where do we return? Well, we gotta return to the walk cycle. What is this return depending on? Nothing. Will happen on its own. Whenever it's finished. So somewhere here, for example. Yeah, well, we let's give it a bit more blending, so it looks a little bit more elegant. There, right? Maybe a bit too much. There. Okay, that's it. 
when the animation finishes, it's gonna go back on its own. It's got exit time. Okay. 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 Uh, that's it. So it should already work. Have we saved the code? Yes. Okay. Splash. Yeah, Sweet maroni. At some point. Okay, Don't. that looked weird. Try and like go to the scene, maybe. No, it's doing the jump thingy. Yeah, it is jumpy. So we've got a conflict. The problem is that the ray cast is po that's pointing down is saying, "Hey, there's nothing underneath me." So that's why it goes into the jumping animation. We need to stop that. So let's take a look here. All right. So down ray, blah 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 jump right that will depend if we're on a ladder certainly not so interacting as long as not interacting hmm yeah that's kind of dodgy so what if we're carrying a bomb that's not great because i think if you're carrying a bomb is also interacting so i'm not sure let's take a look so pick up routine interacting is true uh it's not interacting as soon as you have it on your head yeah so it should be okay so if not interacting, we're going to add it right here. So here we say if not interacting. Close around, open a squiggle, close it here. Say if not interacting, then we can jump. Otherwise, can't jump. So while you're on the ladder, there should be no interaction. I think you did the climb. That's not that bad. I mean, wait. So let's see what happens here. It's not great either, but. <laughs> Nobody will see that. It's not terrible. <laughs> it's not bad. Uh, it's like the animation. That's pretty good. Right? I yeah, mean, if you're like seeing it like this, it, it actually yeah. looks like he's clapping. Yeah. yeah. He's a little bit far from the... Ladder. Ladder, yeah, but it's not too terrible. We could shift him a bit closer. No, I think it's pretty good, eh? It yeah. Looks, looks pretty solid. All right, sounds Speaking good. Speaking of picking up on the bombs, we need to make an animation for that as well. Right, and there was another problem also with, with the bombs. Well, I mean, I don't know that we need an animation that badly. Okay. Bob is bigger than the head of the player. I'm fine with that, but I'm weirded <laughs> out by the fact that I didn't experience that weird bug. Oh, you know what it could have been? Oh, there it is. It could be related to jumping, but I don't understand why. That seems odd. Because now we've definitely turned off jumping while interacting, right? Yeah. No, there it is. There it is. I think it's probably got something to do with rigid bodies. That's my guess. All right, so... Yeah, I'm not sure why it's happening, but it's happening. Okay. Out of all my nose. I'm wondering if we could create a composite collider from all of this. I don't know if it exists as a concept. Well, whatever. Okay, so step now. Uh, next step before we fix any of this is we're gonna deal with the thing. Anyway, blow your nose. Yeah. Mm, um, yeah. Just turn around or something away from the microphone. <clears throat> Okay, <clears throat> now uh, let's figure out the whole movement. So, uh, in our movement, we got we got this thing that the character follows the right stick, right? And we don't want to really do that. So, raw rotation input, that's fine, but not really used where we use it. So, let's see. Here's the rule. Hit Control F for me. Boop. And boop, there it is. So, target position, transfer position, rotation, input, normalized, blah, 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 etc. Uh, structure, look at target. So that's an interesting thing, right? That our target is where we're aiming. Now, what we should do instead is we should have the target change uh, with the raw movement input. So let's copy this. 
and put it right here. Save. That's it. Okay. That, that should completely change the way the character behaves now. Let's see. My right stick doesn't do anything. Uh. But then again, my thing doesn't rotate at all, which is a bit surprising. Let's go take a look. So, ah, row rotation magnet, that's the problem. So, copy this as well. Paste it here. Save. Okay. And now we should hopefully get a rotation that makes some degree of sense. Mm -hmm. Now he's actually moving where he's facing. That's right. Right, so... Can you still spin the sword how you would like no. to? The, no. Yeah. At the moment, that's not related to any in any way. Yeah, you can still rotate in the air, which you shouldn't be able to. You, We can turn that off easy, right? But swimming now makes some degree of sense. So if I swim the other way, he immediately turns. It's a bit abrupt, but at least it makes some degree of sense. Yeah. Right? And if we then goes up the ladder, it's kind of cool. But up the ladder, can I rotate? I can't. But I can still climb on the ladder while, like, diagonal. So that's yeah. not brilliant, right? We're going to have to force that rotation towards the ladder. Um Let's fix that too. But I quite like this movement. It looks a bit different. Uh, now, for the, what that means is that our target is fine, but we need to create another target as well to be able to aim our sword. Right? Yeah. Unless we want to actually turn it into a game that's a bit different where the right stick doesn't do that. Okay. I think that could be fine too. Maybe the right stick could be dodging or some crazy stuff. I don't know. We'll see. Right? Yeah. So the raw rotation movement is still being picked up, but not used for any reason, right? Now, one thing that we definitely want to do is um, move this stuff, cut, paste, save. So we moved it inside, save again. As long as we have a terrain state, we can rotate. Otherwise, no rotation. Okay. okay? Now, um, we said the thing about looking at the ladder. So here at the beginning of the ladder, right, we are climbing onto the ladder. This is our mounting time. Okay, Should awesome. We move the climb thing. Yeah, we can do, animation? we can move the, um, we can face, right, our, uh, um, the, the ladder itself. So here it says structure, look at target, right? We could do structure, look at, um, uh, Look at the ladder itself. Yeah. Now, do we have a ladder? Yeah, there it is. Okay. So, immediately here at the beginning, let's not do anything fancy. We're going to do structure. Try again. Structure. There it is. Dot. Look at. Open. And ladder. copy. Paste. Dot. Transform. Close round, semicolon. Save. Let's immediately go test if this works. Yep. It should. And then we're going to figure out what's going on with that bug of when we're carrying a bomb. Uh, we're getting the, those little stutters. That that may be complicated. Okay, I can't rotate after jumping, which I like. Let's see the ladder. Okay, let me grab the ladder deliberately in the wrong position. Uh, Whoa. <laughs> that, wa that doesn't work. Whoa. That worked. Not really. No, We're still that sideways. Didn't work. <laughs> uh, Hello. <laughs> I only saw his face. <laughs> okay, so that didn't work at all. Um, hmm. That could be that the ladder is underneath us or behind us. All sorts of crazy things. Uh, blah. Rotatable object. What's this? Okay, so that's one of those things that sort of um, can rotate 90 degrees depending on the color, right? Um, so, one thing we could... Oh, it's got a rotation index. I knew that was going to be useful. We can now go and get this rotation index and decide to rotate that way ourselves. Okay. okay now... Whether it's going to be right or wrong, I don't know. We'll find out. So let's copy this entire thing and go to the player. And here type rotation 
equals paste. Okay, now rotation index doesn't exist here, but it exists here. So copy ladder, paste it, dot, save. Okay, so I'm almost sure this is wrong, but that's okay. So we're going to start with this rotation and see which way we're facing, and then we're going to correct decide it with the correct right it based on rotation. that. Yeah, based on that, we'll we'll see. Right. So, do, 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 do. ah, splash. Okay, so that's back. The exact opposite way, which is precisely what I expected. Okay, that's not a He's problem. He's climbing up the air. That's very easy. All you need to do is how many possible rotations do we have by ninety degrees? Ninety, one eighty, mm -hmm. two seventy, and three sixty. Mm -hmm. So, if you have uh, a rotation index of 1, for example, what do we need? We need 180 more. So, then add 180. Yeah, you can do that. That should work. Save. Uh, ah, no, it's unhappy because of uh, the multiplication. So, you would technically need this. Now, I'm not 100% sure this is actually going to be correct for every angle. And we got a problem. In our map, there's only two possible ones. So, what we're going to do is we're going to go and play around with our map a little bit. Um, in our textures. GIMP. Open the map. <clears throat> okay, so now we need to remember things, which we don't. <laughs> So yes. this is the entity information, okay? Uh, let's immediately reduce our pixel size to one. Let's put pencil, that's the first step. So entity information, we're gonna need for sure, but entities we also need, okay? So let's hide the entity info. Letters are green, okay? So let's display the world. And now on top of ladder, we're going to pick the green color. Make sure it's proper green, it is. 255 here, nothing else. Okay, and we're gonna put a ladder over here and a ladder over here. And a ladder over here. So this one left, right, down. Okay, so now let's expose the entity information like this. And I don't remember anymore, but there is a certain percentage of red. So let's quickly go and grab this red and see how much it is. So this one is 170, so this is three quarters. Uh, at least I think it's three quarters. <laughs> I don't remember how we did it. Okay, so let's take it. This should be exactly the same color. 170. Yeah. Yeah. So, let's see. And the other ones are much darker. 255 uh, multiplied by... So, 85. And let's see. 85 times 3. Uh, 85 times 2, 170, right? So you got zero, 0, 170 is 180 degrees, right? So we know that this one is facing up, all right? So let's do 255 should face right. I don't know. So we're going to go pure red and paint it over here, okay? So, yeah, the, our, our map design is big, complicated. We should make ourselves some clever tools, obviously. But yep. what, what are you going to do, right? Now Actually, we need to make a face left. Yep. Well, one of them is going to be pure black, right? This one, it's either down or left. I'm not sure. And then there's one in the middle uh, with left. 85. This one. Okay. Good. Now we're gonna we need to export two maps. Uh, always leave all of these visible. Okay, so here you go. Control Shift E. No, hold Control Shift E. Come on, you've done this a million times. Textures, uh, entity map. That's the one. And now we're gonna hide this one. Export this one. Control Shift E. And this one goes to Info Map. Now let's see how wrong we got it. Yeah. Oi. <laughs> Whoops. Absolutely perfect. <laughs> I, I don't believe it if I see it. 
<laughs> the rotations are right. Completely perfect. Okay, so that's good. Splash. All right, so now let's see. So that's wrong. Point in the wrong direction. That's correct. Point in the right direction, yep. Mm -hmm. That's correct. So the bottom one is wrong. Yeah, which makes me guess the top one's going to be wrong too. Let's go try that one. Yes. So top and bottom are wrong. Right and left are correct. Hmm. All right, so <clears throat> that's odd because it was wrong both times. Save. Let's try and do this instead. And here you put plus two. Save. It should be exactly the same to be frank. In fact, I don't think it'll make a single difference. Let's see. Correct. That's the other one. Correct. So my bet is I got the brackets wrong. So my math was wrong. Correct. Splash. That one. Yep. All done. So the ladder facing process is fixed. I mean, it doesn't look fantastic because we snap into there, but it's so far that I don't think it matters. And players are just going to tap and go. You know, so it's gonna immediately rotate them. So even if you type from afar, oh, uh -oh that was weird. Diagonal. That was diagonal too. What the heck? It's not working. That means. Yeah, but it works most of the time. See? Huh? So I think there's a conflict between when we press the button and us holding uh, the direction. So what we're going to do is we're going to make absolutely sure that everything works here. Okay. So here, instead of doing this one rotation once, okay, we're going to cut this. There. Uh -huh. And we're going to put save and simply put it here. So save. So we'll repeat a bunch of times, but it's a minuscule operation. Shouldn't be a problem. And now. Let's see if it works. So it's very extreme. Now it forces it every frame for a bit. Right? Okay. Straight. Straight is an arrow. Straight again. Mm -hmm. I think it will work now. Because what was happening is that the update loop was running one more frame and forcing it to rotate the direction my stick was. That's why when I wasn't holding the stick in any direction, it was going perfectly straight. Now I'm holding the stick deliberately in a different direction, and it's doing it just fine. And I'm glad it still works. I quite like the the animation for climbing is surprisingly good. I think it's cartoony, but it works fine. It looks like climbing. Oh <gasps> no! Oh, because oh, oh, that's two. that's three. Right? Yeah, that's three spaces, only two. <laughs> <laughs> I fell in the water. Okay, wait, which one was the one with two spaces? There was one. Go to the, <gasps> I think, left. <laughs> there, the, oh. <laughs> Splash! Run! <laughs> in the sea. See ya, Mr. Bomb. Oh, <laughs> <That's just laughs> oh dear. <laughs> it's a little fair. Can, can we jump with a bomb on our head? find out Oi. over here huh. you got it. I'm so slow because I'm getting stuck <laughs> all right so let's let's find out what's happening there well I mean let's speculate really let's try and guess because I don't think we can find out my bet is something's going on between the rigid body of the bomb and yourself that's that's what my guess would be now is the rigid body of the bomb functioning or not when you've picked it up? And I'm not sure whether it is or isn't. Would we have to turn it off? Yes, uh, that would be my guess. I mean, I know we're doing something, like maybe we're turning it kinematic, so save. Whoops. Okay, I don't see it here, so my guess would be it would be an enemy instead. 
aggression, patrol, interaction. That's it. So if it's an enemy bomb, start explosion circle, blah, 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 stop interaction, start interaction. Stop interaction, start routine, blah, blah, blah. Okay, wait a moment. Oof, it's been a while, I can't remember now. Pick up routine. Okay, so let's see. Current interaction object, that's the object we're picking up. If it's the enemy, start interaction routine. Okay, so we're going to the enemy and start an interaction routine, which stops aggression, st st stops interaction routine, and then starts the interaction routine. Interaction routine is going to do a certain thing. If not passive, get component, start explosion, explosion circle. Passive then becomes true. So the bomb becomes passive. What happens when it becomes passive? Maybe we should find passive? No, wait a moment. There's no need to do that quite as yet. So my guess is the enemy has the rigid body on it. There it is. There it is, RB, right? So RB... Is kinematic equals true, it says. At the yeah, start. well, we want to see in... So the patrol, every routine stops. Is kinematic is true. I think this is insufficient. Let's try with simulated... Well, whatever it is, let's try rigid body dot, and let's see what options we got. Enabled, go with enabled. Ah, uh, we can't. Okay. Leave it here, save. Do we have a collider? C c c collider, I don't see it. Is it on the enemy bomb? No. All right, so. I've got an idea, we could change its layer to something else, like carried or whatever, and then when that layer is changed into to, to that, uh, we can um, then change it back when we throw it. Okay. Yeah. So let's edit layers, add one, and go carried object. It's layer 16. Okay. 16. 16. Now let's see if the uh, enemies, enemy bomb. So it's got a layer enemy, and there's an enemy awareness we need to remember here. Hmm, it's a bit worrisome. What happens if you? Well, it's fine. It doesn't need an awareness when you chuck it about, so it should be fine. So layer enemy, layer uh, carried object. Yeah. So something like that will do. Okay. So here we can do. Um, Wait, that's an interaction routine. That's not a pickup routine. So save this. Pickup routine is in player. Yeah, it's in player. So start interaction routine. Hmm, do we have an interaction types or anything like that? I don't think so. I don't think we have an interaction type anywhere. Game manager. IE type, I just saw. Yeah, well, that's interactive entity. Uh. Let's create another one. Public enum. Interaction type. Open a squiggle. In enter twice. Close it. Save. Copy this. Paste it here. Pick up. Save. Uh, now here where it says start the interaction routine in the player uh, we're gonna feed an interaction routine type to this guy okay so uh, let's request an interaction routine type interaction type uh, just wait 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 a moment wait a moment let's think this through um, sometimes I, I code before I think so this is the interaction routine. It starts and it does whatever it is that it needs to do. In this particular case, it's nothing. But we could do it right here without even this because we already know the interactive entity type. So let's stick with that for now. And let's remove this again. Save. And save. And here, if not passive, we're going to say uh, game object dot layer lowercase dot layer equals 
Uh, and it was 16, I believe. So type 16. Yeah. Semicolon. Oh, I don't know if this is going to work. You may need to put an arrow and some other stuff. It gets a bit more complicated. This may or may not work. I'm not sure. We'll find out. Uh, and when we throw it, let's see what happens. Right? That's when you pick up the routine. Start pick up, take damage, throw. So when you throw, current interaction object be thrown, etc. Uh, be thrown. Huh. That's because it's an interactive entity. Be thrown, etc. Here we need to return to the previous uh, layer. So wait a moment, wait a second. Be thrown. Yeah, because the enemy sends the layer to 16. Uh, okay. But you don't know what layer this needs to return to. <coughs> I don't like this. I don't like this. Save. Okay, so who has access to the object? This guy, right? So contextual interaction. Okay, start pickup. There it is. Current interaction object. And there's this one. Okay, equals IE. So start pickup, pickup routine. There it is. Get component enemy. All right, all right, all right. So all of these things. But we can now tell the current interaction object go to layer or something like that. So save here. Okay. Save again. And go public void. Uh, wait a second though. The whole thing about the layer may be a bad idea. So here we're changing the constraints, right? Uh, do be picked up. Up, up open, close, right? Open, close, open, into two. Okay, so you see how much work we're doing here with the key, with the rigid body? Yeah. Okay, we can possibly do stuff here as well. So let's say... Um, here we got the private rigid body RB. We can't do a collider, but we can do the, rigid, the collider of the rigid body or all of the colliders. So let's see if you can do RB.colliders. Collision, detect collisions. Mm, I thought that there was a collider relationship, but no, there isn't. I'm surprised by this get component there's just get components i don't think there's any get colliders hmm rigid body dot let's read what we got add explosion force add torque angular drag angular velocity center of mass closest collision detection mode compare constraints detect collision drag equals freeze rotation game object hide flags inertia tensor mass angular velocity move name position rotation Sleep, angular velocity, solver interaction, stag, transform, use gravity. Ah, see, that's interesting. We just say use gravity is false. Okay, so you say use gravity is false. Or copy it. And here, obviously, paste it is true, right? This is where we launch it. True, save. Uh, is kinematic, copy this, paste it here, true, save. Uh, the freezing stuff may or may not matter. Okay, notice that here we're requesting the component, Yeah. right? That's because we don't necessarily know where the component is, so we've got many options to deal with this. Let's go here and go if, open round, rb equals equals null. So if the rigid body is null, Close round, open a squiggle, yeah, cut this, put it in here. All right, so if the rigid body is null, then we fetch it. Copy this, copy this, put it here as well, save. And here we can say rb.velocity equals what when you pick it up? What do you want the velocity of the bomb to be when you pick it up? Uh, when you pick it up, you don't want it to have any velocity. Therefore? Zero. Yeah. Vector 3.0 potato. 
the velocity has a direction and a magnitude. Semicolon. Okay. And r rotation, well, that's already frozen, really. Uh, copy both of these. Paste them here. Save. All right, that'll do. So be picked up. Now, let's go back to the player because I'm fairly sure something is making the guy the kinematic, right? And I don't know if it's enemy. Aha, uh -huh. RB is kinematic. Okay, let's remove it from here. Save. And now for the player's perspective here, you pick up the enemy, that's fine. But here we're gonna do current interaction object dot be picked up. There it is. Open, close round, semicolon. So we're not touching those layers yet. Okay, and let's see what happens. Because one problem with the layers is that approach is valid, right? I wanted to basically flip to a layer and flip back. That approach is valid, but it comes with uh, some possible unexpected events. For example, you could change the layer of the children, right? And you want one layer to be awareness, so you don't want to change that. Let's see here. No, I still, I still feel it. I still feel a little stutter. And I think the reason why that's happening is because essentially we're colliding with the, with the thing. That I can't even move. All right, let's see what the situation is here visually. This is going to help us, I think. Okay, so the player has the bomb right on top of his head, right? Um, the collider of the bomb, maybe? Yes, that would be my guess. So the bomb is essentially colliding it's with, the player, with the player, exactly, just a bit. and weighing on the player, right? The problem is you don't know where this collider is going to be, right? Each object could have a collider in a different place, but maybe maybe we should put all of our colliders on 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 a, on the child or something. It's I. I'm not sure how you get the whole composite collider from the object. What if the object have multiple colliders? Right, so it can become more complicated here. Let's see, bomb spawn point. I think the player may have the bomb on him now. Picked up container, there it is. Enemy bomb clone, right? And the capture collider is right here, so we could just go with that, right? Um, which would be okay, I would think. And we, if we do this, my bet is, yeah, we can move flawlessly, right? Yeah. So that's what's going on. The physics engine is interrupting us. The fact that it's kinematic, it, doesn't really matter. Okay, so uh, let's go to be picked up. And right here, let's create a private. And this one is going to be a collider. Now you should be a bit surprised by this because you should go, yeah, C is fine. You should go, Daddy, aren't there different types of collider? Yeah, yes. there are. A base class for all colliders. So we can use this to get any type of 3D collider, oh, which okay. is quite nice. Okay, so we're gonna do exactly the same concept as this. So copy this, paste it here, copy this, paste it here, and here. Copy this, paste it here, save. Copy this entire thing, paste it here. And now we're gonna say, when we pick it up, C dot enabled equals false. So we disable the collider, semicolon, and then copy all of this. And when we launch it, paste. True. The collider works again when we throw the bomb. Oops. Save. All right, now let's test this again. And we're basically, we've reached the hour now. Let's see. I feel really fixed. weird without using the right stick to move. You should try it out yourself after this, see, see what you think. And I'm moving. Flip. Moving perfectly. Yes. Bob is also moving perfectly. I'm going to chuck it into the river. Uh, I'm going to jump. Yes, you can jump with the bomb. It works. I was able to jump. I definitely saw my character jump. Okay, you try it. Here okay. we go. Get ready. Okay, so this is A. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's fine. A, A only, only. switchified. You're switchified? Yes. Okay. You don't need the right stick at all, so it's just left stick. You get caught, Ow. you get killed. Bye bye. Splash. Du, 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 du. Okay, see if you can get to the fortress without being caught. 
get through it or get yeah, to sure, it. Yeah, sure, get to the safe point. I think the first challenge in our game is going to be exactly that. We're going to put, we're going to put uh, bombs that are going to patrol and we're going to get to our first power. And the power will be picking up bombs. Ah, no. You could cut. You could cut. Whee! <laughs> yeah, I win. <laughs> yes. So next time we're actually going to do some interesting stuff. For now, we did quite a bit of uh, maintenance and making things work. But I, I'm fairly confident we're in a good spot. Um, yeah, I better make let's do one it. last thing where we're going to turn off... Uh, all of the vision cones and let's see how that works so before we do that let's actually create some kind of uh, game manager trigger for that or something like that I'm not sure yet but let's do that for now just have some kind of large trigger like a button and let's do it on the player actually let's do it on the place so the player will be able to either see vision cones of others or um, um, or his own so here you go public yeah, make it public and uh, call enemy cones enabled mm -hmm. and uh, ah, boo obviously yeah and go equals false so we're gonna start with a false but then we get the first copy power. all of this no not necessarily paste I mean we may or may never uh, enable them okay it's, it's fine player cone enabled save all right so we've got player cone enabled and enemy cones enabled now these need to decide certain things um, and what we're gonna have to do is we're going to as soon as we set up I know there's a setup somewhere it doesn't look like there's a setup for the player so it's here in awaken right so inside awaken that's where we're doing the awareness size and all of these things. Yeah. Right? So uh, what we need to do is we need to decide whether we're going to see that or not. And here, as you can see, there's absolutely nothing indicating that there's a mesh renderer. But we do have a mesh renderer. So let's go and take a look at the player and the enemy bomb and this sort of thing. Because they all will have an awareness module. We know what they do. So it's vision cone. That has the awareness module on it. Okay, and it has a renderer cone. Renderer cone, that's important. Okay. Let's rename it from cone to area. Yeah, enter and save. You'll see why. Because in the future, we may have an enemy that sees in every direction, right? So that will have a renderer circle. You yeah. Know? So renderer area is better. So we got the renderer area of this enemy. That's good. Now let's see the renderer area. Uh, area of the player okay so there's vision cone which has the awareness module very important that we pay attention to this and rename this one to awareness area hit enter save no, it saves automatically actually. all right so inside awaken so here first thing first we need to find that awareness area okay so private and you can call this one a mesh render we'll make it a mesh render Space, call it renderer area. Semicolon. All right, now in setup is where we're going to pick it up. Okay, so copy renderer's area, paste it right here, or shift V, and go equals transform.find. Do you remember its name? It what was his name? It was renderer area. Yeah, I don't remember if it was renderer or render. Renderer. Renderer area. Renderter. Renderter area. Quote. Close. Get component. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, it's a mesh renderer. Come on. Come on now. Pay attention. Mm hmm. Brackets, semicolon, or colon, because it's rebellious. Okay? Because it's what? Rebellious. Now, so we've set it up. Now, what we need to do is we need to decide what to do with it. And what we're going to do with it is this. So you type renderer area equals, uh, no, rather, dot enabled equals, and save. So now there's a few problems. We don't know if this is if the owner is a player or an enemy 
or whatever. So let's see first of all where the player owner and the enemy owner are set up right here. Player owner, enemy owner. Okay, so we are going to change the order of this. We're going to cut this and put it here. Then we're going to cut this and put it here. So this is for the player, right? Yeah. So save. Now red area is dependent on the player's uh, bool variable. So we're going to go to the game manager who knows about our player, right? Yeah. Dot script dot player dot player dot uh, player cone enabled. No, yeah, player cone enabled. Tab, semicolon. Simple as. Done. Copy this. For the enemy, yeah. Yeah. And now type enemy. Cones enabled. Save. All right. So one defect of this is that once they're enabled or disabled at the start, that's it. We're done. Not brilliant. Okay. It's something we may need to change in the future, but that's good enough for now. Yep. Okay. So <coughs> now all cones should be immediately disabled. And in fact, uh oh, null reference. And in fact, not. Yeah. Why do you think we get a null reference? I know, but why do you think we got a null reference? In fact, we got exactly three null references. Why do you think we got three? One for every bomb? Yes. So why the bombs and not the player, for example? Why is the player fine, but the bombs are not? Maybe we did a... Maybe we misspelled something? No, that would be silly. That would cause a compiler. The code would not even write correctly. Oh. You got a null reference. What's a null reference? It means that something isn't there. Yes. What isn't there? The what? code? No, the code must be there. You can double click it. Let's go check. Okay, something's missing there. But the cone is there. Well, it could not be there. Something else may be missing. What's missing from the scene at the start? Didn't see anything. The, the cone? The cone of the player was missing? No. The cone of the player went through just fine. There's no error here. The There's a problem with the cone of the enemy. So, what can be null here? That's the first question. Can the game manager be null? No. Okay, so game manager and script are fine, right? Can the enemy cones be uh, enabled be null? It's a boolean. Can a boolean be null? I don't think so. So this is not the problem. This is not the problem. Enabled is a boolean. We don't have to worry. So the only two possible nulls are the render area. That is the cone. And the player. But we've checked, and they're called this. And the player, right? So let's go check that the, the, the enemy... Uh, the enemy's cone is called renderer area and it is inside the object that has the awareness module. Okay? Okay. So enemy, enemy bomb, the vision cone has the awareness module. Inside it, there's an object called renderer area that has a mesh renderer. Should be fine. In fact, I posit to you that we may have gotten an error here. No, I don't think so. It would accept a null right here. No, but if this didn't exist, then the transform would be null, so that would throw an error too. So definitely the transformer is a null. We don't know if the mesh render is in there, but we just checked. So we know it's not this, it's not this, it's not this, not this, not this. What's left? Player. What's wrong with the player? The code? It, it's a null. <laughs> Great answer. Sorry. It's a null. What does that mean? That means you said that something it's not isn't there. there. What's not there? The player and the user. Why is the player not there? The player needs to be spawned just like everything else. So it the player spawn probably spawns after the, the, the bombs, is my guess. Let's go check. Well, I mean, we know this because the player is spawned by the game manager, whereas the bombs are spawned by the map. The map is created before the player. Yes. Therefore, it is guaranteed that the bombs will spawn before the player, which okay. means we could do all sorts of crazy and clever refactoring, but for now, all we're going to do is we're going to move these two variables into the game manager, which is what I had originally suggested. So let's cut this, control X. Uh, for now here, save. And now they both cry. All we need to do is to remove the player part. That's right. And now it should work because the player is not. Mm -hmm. But the, the game player. manager is there first. It's always there. So now we should get no null refs. In fact, no null refs, everything's fine. 
Now let's go test. Yeah, let's actually do one up here. <coughs> let's go to the player and kill that particular uh, target. We don't want to see it, right? So target. Oh, oh the t <laughs> lol. So it's not that. It's the sword holder. Yes, and the sword, which has the default layer. We're just going to. Yeah, completely just disable it, okay? So we don't have a sword at the beginning. Well, sure, but we'll worry about that later completely. Okay, so is this playable? Can we tell which direction we're going? By the looks of the player, we can. So I, I, I don't have much trouble moving, right? But I can't tell which direction I'm facing, which isn't a big deal. I don't think it actually matters. Okay. So the bombs, now the only way you have to tell that they're not going to go aggro... Is their eyes. Yeah, their, their eyes are pointing in a certain direction, so I'm hiding here in the shadow. Wow. <laughs> ah! Okay, so let's go and see how I can deal with the other bombs. Now, obviously, we have huge bias, you and I, because we know how the game works. Right, but here, oh dear. Okay. So we don't know how far the bomb sees, right? Flash. Huh. Okay. And you jump to the water to be safe. There. Good play. Okay. Try it out, and then we're done for the evening. <clears throat> we're almost done. We're almost done. Pretty sure this is far enough. Is it? Catch yes, it. it <laughs> Get out. <laughs> and now, I'm going to go in the fortress again. Huh. You go the cheap way though, you go around it. That's fine. Cheap, cheap way. way strategy. Cheap way strat. <laughs> Top strat. Hashtag. Stuck in the wall. <laughs> Afraid <laughs> of the bomb. The fear yeah. is paralyzing. Pop, 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 pop. <laughs> <laughs> go grab the magic power. Get Magic stuck power in the wall. Of a random okay, here we go. <laughs> All right, so that's it for tonight. We're gonna stop here. To our YouTube YouTube audience, thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you again next time. Bye bye. Bye.